This is Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. All right, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rechach Wadash. All right, Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Holy Tongue. Yahweh Shai is the King and Savior of Israel. And Rechach Wadash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for leading by example in these last days. And Shalom to the hopeful elect. All you Aki and making your bodies a living sacrifice. All right, this lesson is going to be on hope and just how critical and precious it is to the hopeful elect. And even that term, uh, hopeful elect, in and of itself, shows you how critical it is to have hope in these last days, man. And um, I'm going to read the Zechariah again. It says, uh, turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. And we know a stronghold is a place of refuge. It's a place of safety. Like it tells you in Proverbs, the 18th chapter, the name of Yahweh is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and is safe. Okay, but it also tells you in Nahum, the first chapter, verse 7, let me read it right quick. This is Nahum, this is Nahum chapter 1, verse 7. Yahweh is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Right, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is a stronghold, a place of refuge, a place of safety in the day of trouble. And we're in that day right now, all right? We're fast approaching the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? A time like no other, a time that's going to be worse than the transatlantic slave trade. It's going to be worse than World War I and World War II. It's going to be worse than 70 AD. It's going to be the worst time in human history. And, and right now we're rehearsing the righteous acts in hopes, in hopes of being delivered from that destruction, of that calamity, all right, of the, the famine, the pestilence, all of the destruction and woe that's coming to the planet Earth. We're prisoners of hope that we're going to be delivered out of that. All right, now this is Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 4. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Now, this scripture goes into so many different things. Uh, it makes sense on a carnal level, obviously, but also there's this, a higher spiritual meaning. All right, on a carnal level, obviously, a living dog is better than a dead lion. All right, a dog isn't as strong as a lion. It's not as loud. It's not as powerful. But a living dog is better than a dead lion because you can't do anything with a dead lion. All a dead lion can do is rot and decompose. All right, a living dog, you can you can train it to do any number of things. It can protect your house. It could warn you when someone's coming. All right, it could help blind people. You know, there's an endless list of useful purposes for a living dog. There's not a whole lot of useful things that a dead lion can do. All right, and we know a lion spiritually represents the, the Israelites, starting with the tribe of Judah specifically. All right, but on a spiritual level, a living dog is better than a dead lion. The scriptures tell you in uh, Proverbs 21 and 16, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Okay, there's actual dead uh, Israelites that are carnally alive, they're physically alive, but spiritually they're dead because they lack understanding. But when the Father calls you into this marvelous light and you start to drink in these living waters, you, you're you alive, man. All right, Yahweh Shai said this, it is the spirit that quickeneth, okay? The word quickeneth means to make alive. When you come into this truth, you're alive for the first time. You actually have a hope. All right, you have hope of salvation. You have hope of the downfall of your enemies. You have hope of everlasting salvation. You have hope of the kingdom of heaven, okay? Now, those that remain in the congregation of the dead, that, that's like a dead lion, you know? A, a living dog is better than a dead lion. So, you take any Israelite that knows about Yahweh Shai, that knows about the kingdom of heaven, that knows to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, He's better than a dead lion. Somebody that's esteemed as high in this world, you know, a rapper, an athlete, someone that's so-called rich and famous, he's dead. You know, he's a dead lion. All right? Physically, he's alive, but spiritually, he's a dead lion, man. He can't praise the Lord. The average Jake that doesn't know he's an Israelite, even if he knows he's an Israelite, but he doesn't know the truth, he can't praise the Lord. All right? You can't praise the Lord when you're dead. Matter of fact, let me get that right quick. This is... Uh, this is Isaiah chapter 38, verse 17. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. For thou hast cast all my sins behind my back, for the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for the truth. Let me read that again. For the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for the truth the living the living he shall praise thee as do i this day 
the father to the children shall make known thy truth. Right, a dead man can't praise Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. You can't prophesy. You can't warn the elect from the spirit world. What did Apostle Paul say in, uh, in Philippians, the first chapter? He said, to die is gain. He actually wanted, he was torn basically because to be with the Mashiach, to be with Yahweh Shai in the spirit world is better than being down here. But at the same time, when you're in the spirit world, you can't do the work. You can't edify the body if you're just a spirit. You need to be in this these chains of darkness in order to warn the flock. And what did Apostle Paul say? He does all things for the elect's sake. If you do all things for the elect's sake, obviously you need to be down here on earth, man. You can't really praise the Lord from the spirit world. And the scripture says, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. All right, if you're new to this truth, if you're a younger brother, you, you may not be the best speaker. You may not have the best memory. You're a living dog compared to a dead lion. You have that hope. All right, let me read that again right quick. This is Ecclesiastes 9, verse 4. For to him that is joined, think of, think of the body, all right, all the pieces of the body of a Mashiach fitly joined together, okay? For him that is joined to all the living, there is hope, right? If you're joined unto the body of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, like it tells you in Ephesians, the first chapter, you have hope. You have hope of salvation. You have hope that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to make good on his promises. And it says, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. All right, if you're in this truth, you know the name of the Lord is Yahweh Shai. You know the name of his father is Yahweh. You know to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. You know the RFID chip is the mark of the beast spoken of in Revelation the 13th chapter. You know not to take that chip. You know that the self-proclaimed white man is the devil. And you know he's going to come down with great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. All right, you're measuring the times diligently. You're, you're in the faith. You have a hope. You have a hope that you're going to be saved from these calamities. A dead lion doesn't have that hope. All right, Lil Wayne, LeBron James, these guys are dead lions. Drake, all, right, all of these so-called uh, celebrities in this world, they they don't have the truth, so they don't have hope. When this dollar collapses, finally, they're they're done, man. If you place your faith and your trust and your hope and and riches of this world in a monetary system that's based on debt, that's based on Esau just manipulating numbers on a computer screen. When Esau decides to close the casket on the U.S. dollar, all of these jakes that have put their faith and their hope and money and riches they're going to be destroyed man and they're going to know like man because they all know they're israelites they they all know of the truth they've heard of the truth and they've chosen this world over the hope of yahweh shai mashiach and they're going to be destroyed all right now i want to get into this word hope because uh it's very important to understand the meaning of words and um the apostles of great millstone specifically apostle gabar he stresses the importance of knowing the words that you're using. Know the importance of the words that you're reading. Know the importance of the words that you're saying when you speak. Okay, it's very important. Hope hope has an actual definition, a tangible... It, it's one of those words that's been um, completely corrupted and misused by so-called Christians and, and religious people in general. But when you get into this truth, man, you realize that words have meaning, they have power, and a lot of these words are very straightforward. Once you understand the etymology and the denotation of words, it takes a lot of that religiosity and mysticism out of words, and you get to the nitty-gritty, man, the raw, all right? So this is hope, Strong's G, 1680, El Peace, okay? This Greek word, El Peace, is hope. It means expectation of evil and expectation of good, okay? Now, when I saw this definition, the first thing it reminded me of was Zephaniah, where it says, uh... The Lord will not do good nor evil. Matter of fact, let me read it right quick. This is Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 12. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees that say in their heart, Yahweh will not do good, neither will he do evil. Right, so what is this saying? The Lord is going to punish men that don't have hope. All right, the word hope means expectation of evil or expectation of good. Basically, you expect the Lord to do something. And the Lord says in Zephaniah that he's going to punish those men that are settled on their leaves, meaning they don't think the Lord is going to do good or evil. They don't have a hope. These men don't have hope, all right? The men that are going to be punished are going to be the men that don't have hope, all right? Hope is an expectation. All right, now, the reason that we're doing this for brothers that go on the highways and hedges, for brothers that do lessons, for brothers that are part of the body, the reason we're doing this is because we expect the Most High to do good to the elect, and we expect the Most High to do evil to the wicked. All right, we fully expect that. We we have an expectation. We we have a hope. All right, we have an expectation of evil for the wicked, and we have an expectation of good for the righteous, man. And the righteous is only through Yahweh Shai Mashiach. We're not righteous of our own works, of our own uh, our own accord, basically. All right, Yahweh Shai 
through his sacrifice and the blood that he shed, he's cleansed the elect, okay? That's why the elect has hope. If you didn't have faith in Yahweh Shai Mashiach, how could you have hope in good? Because according to the law, we're all condemned. According to the law, we all deserve death. So Yahweh Shai is a critical element in having hope of good, okay? Now, again, we've read that the word hope means expectation of good or expectation of evil. So if you know that you're an Israelite, you know that you're supposed to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, and you know that you've broken those law, statutes, and commandments, you've broken the covenant, what does that mean? That means you can expect evil, all right? If you don't have hope and faith in Yahweh Shai Mashiach, if you don't believe in that sacrifice, the only thing you can expect is evil. There's a scripture that says the expectation of the wicked is wrath. Okay, let me get that right quick. I don't want to butcher it. Right, this is Proverbs chapter 11, verse 23. The desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. Right, the desire of the righteous is only good. If you serve Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, you can expect good, man. The scriptures tell you that the servants of the Lord are going to eat while all these other people are starving. The scriptures tell you that the servants of the Lord are going to get beamed up and look down at America being destroyed by thermonuclear missiles while everybody else is going to get caught up in that. Everybody else is going to eat a missile, man. The scriptures tell you that the good is coming to the elect. So the elect has hope. We're the hopeful elect, all right? But it says, uh, the expectation of the wicked is wrath. Right, if you do wickedness your whole life, starting with uh, Esau, these self-proclaimed white people, they're known in the Bible as the wicked, okay? But there's also wicked Israelites, all right? You people of so-called Negro and Native Indian descent, you're the 12 tribes of Israel. All right, two-thirds of our people are wicked, and they can expect wrath. And a lot of them, the reason that they can't repent is because they believe in their mind that they've gone too far, they've done too much. All right, now we know, those of us that are of the hopeful elect, Yahweh's arm is not too short that it can't save, all right? All of the, the just complete abominable things that we've done, we firmly believe that Yahweh Shai can cleanse us and forgive us of those sins. And that's why we have hope. All right, but if you don't have that, you you can expect wrath, all right? The expectation of the wicked is wrath. That's plain, man. This is Romans chapter 8, verse 24. For we are saved by hope. Let me read that again. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why did he yet hope for? Right. If you if you can see something, if you can touch it, if it's tangible to you, if it's right in front of you, then you don't have hope. What what do you have to hope for? All right. We just finished having this uh this wicked pagan holiday that these heathen call Christmas, which we know is really Saturnalia, and all of these heathen, including two thirds of our own people, their hope is in a, a fat Caucasian man sliding down the chimney, providing them with gifts. Man, their hope is in a tree. In their living room, man. Their hope is in just complete vanity and nonsense, okay? You could see our people, specifically our women, completely lose their minds and, and take hold of this wicked pagan holiday, man. Their hope is in total vanity and madness. But our hope is in the heavens, man. Our hope is in the Heavenly Father, the true living power, man. Our hope is in the kingdom of heaven, all right? These people hope in, in Christmas gifts, man. Basically, you know, back in the G, when you would celebrate this madness... As a child, you would tell your parents, look, I want this video game for Christmas. I want this toy for Christmas. You know, your mom or your dad, they, they might not tell you for sure whether or not they were going to get it. Why? Because they wanted to instill that hope in you. All right. Once you saw the toy, you might see the toy December 21st, December 23rd. Once you saw it and you knew that you were going to get it on Christmas, that hope was gone. All right. Once you once you know that you have something, what is there to hope for? Apostle Paul just said, For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Verse 25, But if we hope for what we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. All right, and the word patience means suffering. All right, when you don't know for sure that you're of the elect, that makes you feel like, man, I could, I could actually get caught up in this calamity, man. I could actually get hit with a missile. I could actually take the chip. If I don't do what the Lord said to do, he could give me over to one of these FEMA concentration camps. I could get tortured to death. I could watch my children get tortured to death. All right, all of these these uh, sore calamities that are written in the scriptures, this is going to befall the people that aren't saved by hope. These are going to befall the the, the two thirds. All right, the wicked of Israel, all right, and the heathen, obviously, but mainly we're, we're dealing with Israel right now. The twelve tribes. Those of you that don't have hope, that don't have uh, faith in Yahweh Shai Mashiach, you're going to lose it, man. You're going to fall, and you're going to give in. All right, you're going to take the chip. You're going to be destroyed. All right, a lot of you are going to eat pork. 
when there's nothing else to eat, when you haven't eaten in days and you might come across like some Vienna sausage or something like that, you, you're going to fold because you don't have that integrity that comes with hope and faith of salvation. Okay, now this is actually, let me go up a bit. This is verse 19, still in Romans 8. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestations of the sons of the Most High. Right, first of all, the word Israel comes from the Hebrew word Yasharala, which means literally translated, he prints power or he is a prince of God, okay? That's that's what we are. We're the sons of the Most High. But right now, we've been, well, what's going to say? Verse 20, For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope. Right. The sons of the Most High were made subject to vanity, which the word vanity means emptiness or, or nothingness. We were put in these chains of darkness so that we could experience uh, what it's like to sin. That knowledge of good and evil is making us liken unto the Most High. Because if you only know good, you can't be a proper judge. All right, The Most High said a false balance is an abomination. You have to know good and evil to judge a matter correctly. All right, Even Yahweh Shai himself, the greatest judge, he knew sin when he was Adam and Solomon. Okay, But that's another lesson. He's the perfect judge because he, he was made like unto us with sinful flesh. In his final incarnation, he did it perfectly, man. He didn't sin at all. And that's why he's that perfect sacrifice, okay? And all of us, we have that hope that when he comes, we're going to be made like him. We actually have that hope, man. These people, they don't know Yahweh Shai. They don't know what he did. They don't know the significance of his sacrifice. They don't know what the new covenant is. They don't know the prophecies. They don't have that hope. All right, when you come into this marvelous light, you actually take on the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Heavenly Father and His Son, man. And you have a hope that He's going to deliver on those promises, man. You have a hope that you're going to be delivered. Well, the next verse. This is verse 21. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of the Most High. Right, now again, when Yahweh Shai returns, we're going to be made like unto Him. And He's perfect, all right? Yahweh Shai is actually perfect. He's without sin. He's without blemish. He's without flaw man and he's going to have everything underneath his dominion and we're going to be joint heirs with him man we have that hope man we have that expectation of good okay we're not in that congregation of the dead anymore we're out of the world we're not uh, matter of fact let me get this this is this is ephesians chapter 2 verse 11 wherefore remember that ye being times past gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands that at that time ye were without Mashiach, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, having no hope and without the most high in the world. Right. When you're a Gentile, which the, the Gentiles here is talking about Israelites who are taken on the customs of the heathen. Like it tells you in the book of Maccabees, we become Hellenized. All right. We become Greeks. All right. When you're in the world, when you're under the identity of an African-American, a black person, a Puerto Rican, uh, a Negro, any of these any of these bywords that aren't your true identity, and you're not reading the scriptures, you're not in the Torah, you're not reading the promises, you're not reading the law, statutes, and commandments, when you're just walking as a Gentile, you're without hope, all right? You don't have a hope of, of the covenants of the promise. You don't even know about the covenants of the promise. First of all, these people in these churches, man, if you ask them, what is the faith and patience of the saints? Crickets. Okay, what is what is the promise given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Crickets. You have people that are in church their whole life and they have no idea that the Israelites are going to rule the world, man. That's all throughout the scriptures, man. That's an everlasting promise that the Heavenly Father made to His chosen people. And you have people that claim to believe in the God of the Bible that have absolutely no idea what He promised His chosen people. It's sad, but again, it's in the scriptures. It says, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel... And strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope right these people even though they they have the Bible in their house some of them even read the Bible they don't have a hope all right what is hope hope is expectation of good they don't know what good is they don't know what good the Heavenly Father promised his people so they don't have a hope they don't have an expectation this is Acts chapter 26 verse 6 this is Apostle Paul and now I stand and am judged for the hope for the hope of the promise made of the Most High unto our fathers. Man, <laughs> yo, Apostle Paul, let me read that again. This is Acts chapter 26, verse 6. And now I stand and am judged for the hope 
of the promise made of the Most High unto our fathers. Who are our fathers? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, Apostle Paul is saying he has hope of the promises made of the Most High, Yahweh, unto our fathers, man. Unto which promise are 12 tribes instantly serving the Most High day and night. Hope to come. Hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Right, this is... First of all, this is a cut to anybody saying that Apostle Paul was teaching a heathen. All right, his scriptures clearly tell you unto which promise our 12 tribes, okay? The promises made of the Most High unto our fathers, our 12 tribes. This is this is plain and straightforward, okay? But that's another topic. Basically, Apostle Paul is saying he has a hope of the promises made of the Most High to our fathers, man. And that's that same hope we have, man. The prophets, the believers, the teachers. All right, we believe that the Heavenly Father is going to make good on His promise. That's a hope, all right? Which is, again, a hope is an expectation of good or an expectation of evil. We have an expectation of the good promised to the seed of Jacob. This is Titus chapter 1, verse 2. In hope, in hope of eternal life, which the Most High, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. Man, <laughs> let me read that one more time. Titus 1, verse 2. In hope of eternal life, which the Most High that cannot lie promised before the world began. Now this is this is a relatively short scripture, but there's so much here, man. That first of all, we have a hope of eternal life. All right, when you take hold to the law, statutes, and commandments with faith, okay. Once that new covenant is fulfilled, we're gonna keep the laws perfectly. We're not gonna die. This this eternal life here is literal. You got you got guys saying that we're gonna die in the kingdom after, you know, a couple. Of, man, listen, man. The scriptures tell you the wages of sin are death. So if we don't sin, what does that mean? The elect of Israel is not going to die ever, ever again. After the, you know, there's going to be martyrs, obviously, in these last days. But once Yahawashai comes back, that's it, man. He swallowed up death and victory, man. And we're joint heirs with Yahawashai, man. We're going to have the new covenant. A lot of you Jakes don't understand what the new covenant is, man. You don't understand the gravity of being perfect, man, with the Heavenly Father. We're going to be found blameless and we're going to be made perfect. Like Yahweh Shai, which as I'm speaking aloud, I'm realizing a lot of you just don't believe in Yahweh Shai. That's why you come up with the arguments that you come up with. If you believed in the Son, if you believed that the Father raised the Son, if you believe that the Son lives forevermore, and you believe that the elect is going to be made like unto the Son, this is really not debatable, it's not confused, it's very straightforward. If you believe, it's straightforward. Okay, the scripture says, In hope of eternal life, which the Most High that cannot lie, promise before the world began again this is saying so much it's saying yahweh can't lie it's saying yahweh promised before the world began and it's saying we have a hope in eternal life man if you have a hope and a power that can't lie and a power that can't lie promised you eternal life that's <laughs> again <laughs> hope is expectation of good how what's more good than that man eternal life promised by the heavenly father that can't lie i mean what what else is there to talk about, man? What else is there to hope in if you're of the elect? All right, it tells you in St. Luke, the first chapter, that the prophets have been here since the world began. All right, the prophets are preaching the word. In the beginning was the word. All right, who's the word? Yahweh Shai. So here it's saying in, in Titus, it's saying the Most High can't lie, and he promised this eternal life before the world began. All right, and Yahweh Shai is that word, man. So we're dealing with an everlasting covenant that comes with eternal life that was promised before the world was even created, man. All right, wrap your head around that. This is 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of the Most High, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Right, man, that's the spirit, man. That's just... Just what I was going into, man. When you have hope in Yahweh Shai Mashiach and his second coming, and you have hope that you're going to be made like him, you're purified, man. You purify yourself in that hope. Why? Because, first of all, Yahweh Shai was perfect. So if you believe in him, and you're trying to walk in the spirit, not in the flesh, you're trying to keep the commandments, you're going to try to walk like Yahweh Shai walked, man. And when he gets back, you're going to be glorified with him, man. You're going to get that new body. You're going to be perfect. You're going to keep the commandments off instinct, off a of reflex. It's not, it's not going to be anything to keep the commandments perfectly, man. 
You're going to please the Heavenly Father every single day, which deep down, that's what the elect want, man. The elect want to please the Heavenly Father. You don't, you don't like sinning and then apologizing. You, you would rather just not sin in the first place, man. That's what you really want deep down and not have to uh, repent from sinning, man, to just be perfect, to just walk uh, in perfection, man, just like the Son. And that's what's going to happen. The scriptures tell you we're going to be made like unto him, man. And he's going to come He's going to come as an angelic force. He's not going to come down as a man. He's not going to be walking around like, you know, what's up? No, he's going to come with power and might and destruction and salvation, man. It's going to be every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess, man. And we're going to be joint heirs with that power, man, if we're of the, the elect, Lord willing, man. This is Psalms 130 and 5. I wait for Yahweh, my soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for Yahweh more than they that watch for the morning. I say, more than they that watch for the morning. Let Israel hope in Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. For with Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Man, that's beautiful, man. My soul waited for Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, man. That's what's. That's what's on the elect's mind, man. That hope, that expectation of good from Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. It says he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities, man. You're going to get a clean slate. That's the hope, man. This is Psalms 147, verse 11. Yahweh taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Praise Yahweh, O Jerusalem. Praise thy power, O Zion. Right. The Most High takes pleasure in them that fear him, and those that hope in his mercy. Those that have an expectation of mercy, man. And really, that's that's why all of this is happening, man. That's why everything is happening the way that it has happened, from Genesis to Revelation. The reason that we're sinning in the first place, again, Romans 8 and 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, meaning there's no such thing as free will. We didn't choose to go off. But by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope. The word subject means to put under the rule, all right? Sub means under, Jack is rule. So we're under the rule of hope, man. The Heavenly Father created hope, and he put us in subjection under hope that we could look forward to his son, man. This is all about Yahweh Shai, all right? Genesis to Revelation is all about Yahweh Shai Mashiach receiving his glory and the relationship between the Father and the Son. We're really just co-stars, man. We're supporting, uh, what do you call it, supporting cast and Yahweh Shai's movie, man. The Heavenly Father created sin and put made us subject to sin so that we could have hope and salvation, man. Because if we were perfect from the beginning, what is there to hope for? How are you going to hope for? Matter of fact, let me, uh, oh man, let me, let me bring this out right quick. This is Hebrews 7 verse 19. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by which we draw nigh unto the Most High. When you read the law, the law is perfection, man. When you, when you go into the scriptures of how a man is supposed to be. How a family's supposed to be, a man, a woman, and child, how a community's supposed to be, a tribe, a clan, all of these things. When you read the law, it's obvious this is how we're supposed to live. The law is perfect, but the law didn't make us perfect. We broke the law, all right? We were made subject to sin. Why? So we could have hope, man. Let me read that again. Hebrews 7 and 19. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. By which we draw nigh unto the Most High. Right, we draw nigh, which nigh means near. We draw near to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai through hope, man. When you read the laws, you can see how the kingdom of heaven is going to be. Because the law, again, the new covenant is going to be the laws placed in our inward parts. We're going to keep the law perfectly. So if you want to know how the kingdom is going to be run, just read the law. And that's your hope right there. What, what is hope? The expectation of good. When you read the law, you can read what to expect in the kingdom of heaven, man. Now, if you if you never sin, if the nation of Israel never went off, we were just in an in instant rulership from the beginning. Where is hope? First of all, the scriptures tell you all things are double unto one another. The heavenly Father created good and evil. How are you going to appreciate good if you never experienced the evil? You had to go through the evil so that you could have hope in the good. You had to experience this rule under these base cave people so you could have a hope. In the, the mercies of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and perfection in the kingdom of heaven, man. In the kingdom, you're gonna appreciate everything, man, from the top to the bottom. So called so called insignificant things that you would take for granted. You're not gonna take them for granted in the kingdom. Like, for example, 
in the kingdom, right? We're going to have clean water, right? Now, obviously, clean water is something that everybody on the planet Earth should have access to. But in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to actually appreciate every gulp of water that we take because we, we grew up in America, man. You grew up drinking fluoride, just all kind of madness in the water, man. In the kingdom, we're going to have the minerals in the water. All right, it's going to be alkalinized. It's going to taste delicious. It's going to actually provide your body with hydration and nutrition. I mean, that's just one example. Water is just one example. Real marriages, man, with real women, real food, real brotherhood. You're not going to have to worry, okay, this guy, he fell out. Now he became a scoffer. It's not going to be scoffers in the kingdom of heaven, man. Our whole nation is just going to be perfection. And we have that hope through Yahweh Shai, man, that expectation of good. All right, so Lord willing, this was edifying, man. Just just keep that hope, man. Like they say, keep hope alive. Well, hey, you, we don't have long, man. This place is about to be destroyed. All right, we expect evil. We have an expectation of evil for America, man. That hope, all right? We have an expectation of good for the elect and an expectation of evil for the wicked, man. So with that, I pray this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakak with Dash. All right, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and shalom to the hopeful, the hopeful elect. All right, shalom.